In this video, we're going to take a look at MIDI and how we can use reactor blocks to send essentially CV signals, convert them to MIDI, and then control VSTs. This is going to allow us to simultaneously play our hardware synths and the VSTs using the same sequencer. So MIDI is a discrete number of steps. When we're talking about pitch, uh, there's also information for note ons, notes offs. We get continuous information in the form of CCs or control change messages, but everything kind of revolves around this idea of 128 discrete steps for things. So thinking about that, we need a way to convert our continuous control voltage signals into this other form of communication, this MIDI protocol. If we open up our reactor patch, I have a setup here in Ableton that I'll provide in the Cadenze Reactor course that essentially bootstraps and gives you a quick way to set up CV information out of your device, especially if it's a Motu, and start controlling your hardware synthesizers. So this is a clock, a sequencer, our gates and triggers, and our pitch CV out. If we open this up and take a look, we can see that we're sending pitch and CV out the last two output ports. One thing that's really important here is that in Ableton, the MOTU shows up as one and two for your main outs, but then three through 10 were, are actually the one through eight on the back of the device. Those are gonna be the DC coupled outputs that we use to send CV. The other thing is we need to go over here and make sure that our mains, our main out one and two are set up to the main out assigned here in the MOTU interface uh, control panel. So now that we have that, what we want to do is tune our device again. So I'm going to unplug our modulation on the cutoff. I'm going to open up the cutoff frequency all the way. I'm going to turn sustain on so that when we send the on signal, it just stays on and doesn't decay away. And then we need to go over here and rerun our tuning module. So I'll turn up the volume here and away we go. So now this is tuned and any VST that we play along with this will be also in the, the same tuning. Now that we have that, I should be able to press play and this sequencer will begin playing right along with the Ableton session. So let's do that now. So we're able to send pitches here. We can also do some glides. Uh, we have full control over our cutoff frequency. So everything's working like it was previously. What we would like to do now is take this same device here and add MIDI output. So if we go to our library and under utils, we want to grab this new MIDI out device. So this MIDI out device, we can hook up the pitch output and the gate output. And these two devices will now convert these continuous signals into the discrete 128 steps that we get in MIDI. So let me move this up here so we can see it. And then what I've done is set up another reactor instrument on a separate channel that is just a simple sine wave with a VCA. So essentially this is gonna control the amplitude of this sine wave. And I wanna send MIDI here at the top or input of this channel. I wanna send the MIDI in from reactor six. So this is gonna be this other device over here with our sequencer and I'm just listening to reactor six. So what I'll do is turn down the Moog and now when I press play, we're just gonna hear the sound of this synthesizer instead of the Moog. So now we have this sine tone. It's the simplest synthesizer we can put together and what we wanna do is blend that with the sound coming from the Moog. It's very easy now to get a different number of synthesizers playing together and make a very dense, complex sound. So instead of something simple like this sine wave, we could use something with a more digital quality to it or digital tone, something like the OK Computer synthesizer. Which comes with Reactor and is essentially what's known as a wavetable. So these tend to be more, they don't have to be, but they can have a more digital quality to them. So I'll pick something that has some of that, maybe Nyquist Hates Me would probably be appropriate. 
I'm going to turn down the volume so we can blend it. And now I get this warm analog sound from the Moog and something more digital from the OK computer. <laughs> So you can use this to layer up your sounds. It doesn't have to be digital and analog. It can be pads and something FM modulated or whatever you can imagine. And if you have more complex Eurorack setups, these combinations are, are very interesting. And you can take the output of your Eurorack to then go back in and modulate this VST, which is being triggered and controlled by the reactor block setup that you have set up. Basically, any kind of combination between these systems that you can think of is now possible. Up next, I would like to talk about OSC and sending this kind of control information over a network. This is going to open up an entirely new world of controlling your sounds, your performances, and especially if you do things with interactive components or dancers, this is a really great way to add modulation to your different sound sources.